Rebecca. You going away? I'm going to my parents for the weekend. My sister's picking me up at quarter past nine. When are you getting back? We're having a big family dinner on Sunday evening. It's my father's birthday, so I'm going straight into work on Monday. You sound happy. Do I? Perhaps I'm falling in love. What? Are you serious? Yes, I think so. Who is it? What's he like? Well, he's very good looking and he's got lovely eyes. What does he do? Come on, Julia, who is it? He works for a TV company. Really? Do I know him? In fact, he's probably on TV right now. You're watching the local weekend news on Apex TV. I'm Gary Fenton. It's 9.15. Gary? Oh, there's Cindy. Bye, Julia. See you on Monday. Gary? Well, what do you think? Oh. Well, here I am in North Ashborough on a cool Saturday morning. On Saturday mornings, Charlie and Molly Craddock usually go shopping. But they aren't going shopping today. They're doing something completely different. They're walking around the local park and they're doing it backwards. Molly, why are you walking around the park backwards? We're collecting money for local charities. Is it difficult, Charlie? Not for us, because we practice. We walk around our garden for two hours every day. Backwards? Of course! It's very easy, you know. And it's great fun. No, oh. 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 You waiting for someone, Tim? What? Oh, yes. Oh, here she is. Hi. Hi, Julia. Hi, Sean. How are you? Not too bad, I suppose. The police are coming to see us this afternoon. Jason and Kylie put soap powder in the neighbour's fish pond yesterday. Well, good luck. We're going into town. Bye. Have a nice weekend. going out with someone and he works here. Hmm, who is it? Carrie. No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's she giggling about? It's Julia. You'll never guess, but she's going out with Gary. Nonsense. Julia's got more sense than that. It's true. She told me on Saturday. Oh, well, never mind that. What time am I meeting Frederick today? Oh, he phoned to say that he can't make it. Could you call him on his mobile? He's at the House of Commons. Look out, she's coming. Hello, Julia. Oh, um, hi. Oh, Gary, Gary. Julia, are you doing anything this evening? Yes, I am. I'm going out. Are you going out tomorrow, too? No, I'm not. I'm staying in and watching a video with Rebecca. What about Wednesday? Look, what is this, Gary? What do you want? Oh, come on, Julia. Don't be shy. I know your little secret. Secret? What secret? You know. What do I know? Oh, come on, you know. Don't you? Thanks. How was your weekend at your parents? Oh, don't ask. They argued all the time. And I got the usual lecture. Why don't you get a proper job like Cindy? She's doing so well. What about your weekend? Well... On Saturday morning, I was with Tim in Wrigley Park. People do some funny things. Yes, they do. Well, I can't stay here all day. And then Julia arrived, and she and Tim... Julia? Yeah. It seems they're going out together. I didn't know anything about it. Julia is going out with Tim. But... Rebecca? <laughs> new 
series of yours be about? When you come to the meeting tomorrow, you'll find out. Some of your oh. young fans, boys. Can we have your autographs, please? I'll use my own pen. What's it like to be a star? These kids can recognise real talent. That's right. Well, actually, this is for my grandma. <laughs> and the next item is Tim's new series. Tim? OK, well, the series will be called People. And it will be about people's lives. Not famous people, but ordinary people. Like nurses, shop assistants, bank managers, housewives. Won't that be a bit ordinary? No, they'll be ordinary people, but with an extraordinary story to tell. How will it work? It'll be very simple. We'll interview someone in the studio about his or her life story. And will you be the interviewer? I'd like Gary to do it. Me? Uh, why? I'd like to direct it. It'll be a chance for both of us to try something new. Gary? I think it's an excellent idea. Very exciting. So, who have we got for the first programme? It's this woman here, Samantha Richmond. She's a waitress. Mm-hmm. So what's her story? She got married on her 16th birthday. She and her boyfriend ran away to Gretna Green because her parents didn't approve. Sounds interesting. Are they still married? Yes, they are. They've got five children now. Here's a photo of the family. If you do that again, I'll go back to my desk. OK, OK. I promise I'll behave. Good. Now, there's a lot more about Samantha Richmond. She's a very interesting woman. What time will this woman be here, Julia? It's already 20 past two. I'm sure she'll be here soon. Excuse me. There's a message on my answer phone for Julia from Samantha Richmond. When? Just now? This morning. What? I was out of the office all morning at a meeting. Anyway, she says she's very sorry, but she can't come this afternoon because one of her children is ill. Oh, dear, I hope it's nothing serious. Nothing serious? We haven't got an interview. That's serious, isn't it? I meant the child. Well, if she can't do it, we'll just have to find someone from here. Well, it can't be me, because I'm the interviewer. Uh, how about Frederick? He's in Bangkok. Anyway, it needs to be someone ordinary. Well, you can't be serious. <laughs> What's... <clears throat> Our guest this evening is Sean Casey, a cameraman here at Apex TV. Tell me something about your early life, Sean. Well, I was born in Ireland, but my parents moved to England when I was still a baby, and I grew up in London. We were quite a big family, seven kids. I didn't do very well at school, and I left when I was 16. What did you do after school? I got a job in a furniture factory. Furniture? How interesting. Not really. But in my free time, I played the bass guitar with a band called Nightmare. And we got a few good gigs. So I gave up my job and went on the road with the band. Really? Yeah. We never became famous, but we played with some famous bands. R.E.M., Guns N' Roses, Dire Straits. We had some great times. I remember one night in Las Vegas. I was in a bar with you two. They're great guys. Loads of fun. Well, we were in this bar. And they decided to play one of the Evening, Sean. We watched you on TV last night. You were very good. Thank you, Ted. Yes, you were great, Sean. I didn't see it. The kids wanted to watch some quiz programme on the other channel. Just get my pen out. <laughs> there he is. Can we have your 
autograph, please, Mr. Casey. We saw you on TV last night. Did you really play with all those big bands? Yeah. What was it like? It was really great. Hmm. The kids of today. <laughs> yeah. What do they know? <laughs> Up. It's been a long day. This will be for my sister. She works in Hong Kong. Talking of families, are you working this weekend? Just Saturday. I'm going to my parents for the weekend. Would you like to come over on Sunday? They'd love to meet you. Sure. What time? Why don't you come over about three and stay for dinner in the evening? OK. Oh, how do I get there? I'll give you a map. No. Nope. I've got my personal organiser. Well, the easiest way is to take the London Road to Kingston. There's a big Asda supermarket just before you get to the centre of Kingston. You go past Asda and take the first turning on the right. There's a post office on the corner. First on the right. OK. Go down there till you come to the second set of traffic lights. Turn left there and you'll see a pub called the Black Bull on the right. Turn right, and Gloucester Avenue is the third road on the left, number 29. Turn right by the Black Bull, and third left, 29. Got it. Morning, dear. Do you want some breakfast? Yes, please. Morning, Dad. Morning. Oh. Do you have to do that now? You said you wanted it mending. Are we going shopping today? No, not today. Do you remember old Mrs Burns? I'm taking her to stay with her daughter this morning. Where does her daughter live? In one of those little roads near King George Square. We can go shopping tomorrow. It's more convenient on Sunday mornings anyway because there aren't so many people. Don't forget Tim's coming tomorrow. We'll be back in time. When I was driving home yesterday, I saw these two kids. They were running out of a newsagent and the owner was running after them. The kids ran right in front of my car and I nearly hit them. But that wasn't the worst thing. When they turned round, do you know what? It was Jason and Kylie. Tim Barnes. What? When? Where? Thank you. A robbery at a jeweller shop in King George Square. Here we are, Mrs. Burns. Oh, there's another police car. I wonder what's happening. Oh dear, there's nowhere to park. Well, I'll just stop here. It won't be long. Turn right here. That'll be the quickest way. Oh. Oh. Come on, you're blocking the street. We won't be a minute. Can't you move any faster? Allow me. It'll be quicker. Well, really. There you are, Mum. So what happened? Well, 
When we got there, I couldn't find anywhere to park, so I stopped in the middle of the street. While I was helping Mrs Burns out of the car, another car pulled up behind me. And the driver of the car beeped his horn at me. Some people. And poor old Mrs Burns can't move very fast. So while we were walking to her door, the young man started shouting at us. That's terrible. And then he grabbed the suitcases from the car and he just dumped them on the pavement. How rude. But you know, I'm sure I've seen him somewhere before. Tim will be here soon. Uh huh. It isn't usually as busy as that on a Sunday, is it, dear? No, dear. I'll take these in. That's him. That's his car. What, dear? Excuse me. I'd like a word with you. Hi. Do you two know each other? This is the rude young man that I was telling you about. Oh dear. Mum, Dad, this is Tim. Pleased to meet you. Yes, Mother, if I have time, I'll try to go shopping at lunchtime. Yes, I'll buy some apples. No, I won't buy any pears. I know you don't like them. Now, have we got any coffee? Well, go and look, and then ring me back. <sighs> yes, Mother. Oh, I'm sorry. I was expecting another call. What can I do for you? Yes, I have seen the programme. I saw it last night. No. No, I don't think the programmes are too violent. I'm afraid I can't agree with that. She's on the phone. Tim? Have you done that programme about the health farm yet? No, we haven't. We're still looking for someone to go there so that we can film their experiences. I've always wanted to go to a health farm. But you're already fit and healthy, and we need someone who's unfit and stressed out. Stupid man. Rebecca, have those tapes arrived? I'm afraid they won't be here till next week. Next week? That's too late. Get me Frederick. He's gone to Rio and he won't be back till Monday. Oh, give me strength. What do you want, Tim? Hello, Rebecca Bond speaking. Just a minute, please. It's your mother again. Yes? All right, mother. Yes, I'll get some coffee. What? No, mother. I haven't hidden your glasses. No, I can't come home and look for them. Goodbye. I need a break. Welcome to Westland Manor Health and Fitness Centre, Mrs. McKay. My name's Celine, and I'm your personal consultant. Have you ever stayed here before? No, I haven't. And how long will you be with us? About a week. I see. Well, first we'll do some of our regular tests, and then we can work out your personal fitness programme. So would you like to follow me?
So, you finished your tests and Celine has worked out a programme for you. Now it's time for your evening meal. Meal? You call this a meal? A bit of lettuce, a few nuts and some fruit. They won't let me have any biscuits or ice cream or chocolate. Can you have any wine or beer? I can't even have a cup of tea or coffee. This is my drink. A glass of water? I used to be a war correspondent, you know, and I had some hard times. But I always had a good meal at the end of the day, with meat and cheese, not this, this rabbit food. And cut. That was great, Martha. That's it for today, Sean. Right, where shall we go for a meal? I'm starving. Let's try that pub down the road. I fancy a nice big steak and a plate full of chips. Tim, I won't forget this. It's 9.30 and Martha is starting her exercise programme in the gym. That's it. Swing those arms. Swing those arms. Good. And then at half past two, we're going jogging. Jogging? I've never been jogging in my life. Oh, how did you talk me into this, Tim? Oh. Yes. OK, bye then. Yes, love you too. I used to play with this band, you know. Oh, yes. Do you want some more French fries? I've had enough. Sure. Oh, quick. Here they come. How do you feel? Oh, I have never felt worse. I have done some difficult things in my life. I've slept in airports, in fields, even in the street. I've travelled for three days on a camel. I've eaten snakes and insects. But this... This is just too much. And what's the next thing on your programme? The next thing on my programme? You'll see. First, I think I'll make a phone call. Can I borrow your mobile? Sure. Mother, I'm coming home.
Anything interesting? How about going to the theatre? What's on? Waiting for Godot. I'd like to see that. OK. When? How about tomorrow? No, I'm working on Tuesday and Wednesday evening this week. Let's go on Thursday, then. All right. Are you going to get the tickets? Yes, you forgot them last time. I couldn't help it. The job came up at the last minute. Hmm, I've heard that story before. Aren't you going to your aerobics class? Not this week. The instructor's hurt her knee. Are you going out? Yes. We're going to the theatre to see Waiting for Godot. What's the time? Ten past seven. Oh, no. I'm going to be late. Tim will already be at the theatre by now. Hello, 823846. Rebecca, it's Tim. Is Julia there? It's Tim. I'm sorry, Tim. I'll be with you in ten minutes. Well, um, I'm not at the theatre, actually. I'm afraid something's come up and I've got to deal with it. Oh, that's wonderful. So what am I going to do with the tickets? I don't know. I I'm sorry, but I have to go. Bye. What's up? He can't make it. Again. This is the third time he's done something like this. Last time he forgot to get the tickets. The time before that his jeep had a flat tyre. Do you fancy going to the theatre? Oh yes, I've always wanted to see Waiting for Godot. Well, it'll be better than Waiting for Tim. Hi. Do you mind if I join you? Oh, here comes the worker. Did you go to see that play? Yes, thanks. It was very good, wasn't it, Rebecca? Excellent. I really enjoyed it. Look, I'm sorry I couldn't make it. Work comes first every time, eh, Tim? I hope you're not going to do anything like this tomorrow night. It's my friend Charlotte's party. Except, um, I've agreed to stand in for Pete Riley tomorrow, so I probably won't be free till about 9.30. Would you mind going on your own and I'll meet you there? All right, but don't be too late. I was so embarrassed. But there was nobody else to do the interview. Everybody asked about you. I hear you've got a new bloke, Julia. Where's your new boyfriend, Julia? Is he here? It was so... Embarrassing? It's not funny. You wouldn't like it if I stood you up. But it's my job. You know what it's like. I can't help it if something important comes up. Something important? So I'm not important? Oh, I didn't mean that. There are other things in life besides work, you know. I've got a job too, but I'm not a slave to it. But you? You'd miss your own wedding if something important came up. No, I wouldn't. Well, I'm fed up with it, Tim. And I'm not going to put up with it anymore. It won't happen again. I promise. Are you doing anything this evening? I'm having dinner with Julia and her parents. And this time, I'm not going to be late. You're listening to Radio 591. This is the local news. We're getting reports of a serious fire at the Southgate Furniture Factory. We haven't got any more details yet, but we'll bring them to you as soon as we get them. The Southgate place? It's about 15 minutes from here. But what about your dinner with Julia? That's not till half past eight. That traffic light's going to turn red. Police car. Hello? Sean. At the police station? Speeding, but the police don't arrest people for speeding. Going through a red light. 
arguing with a police officer, resisting arrest. I don't believe this. Just one question, Sean. Why was he speeding in the first place? I see. Thank you. Shall we eat? <laughs> anyway, the Prime Minister asked, So, are we waiting for Frederick? And Martha said, I hope not. He's going to be in China till next week. <laughs> so, blimey, where did you spend the night? Julia, I... Don't talk to me, Tim. But I... I don't want anything more to do with you. I've had enough. We're finished. What are you staring at? Tim Barnes. I've got two tickets to see Romeo and Juliet tomorrow. Oh, really? What would you say if I asked you to come with me? What would I say, Gary? I'd say, thank you. I'd love to go. Every day, millions of tonnes of rubbish are produced. We throw our rubbish into the dustbin. It's collected away and... cut. Collected and taken away. We'll have to do that bit again. Give me another cam. Every day, millions of tonnes of rubbish are produced. We throw our rubbish into the dustbin. It's collected and taken away, but what happens to it then? Some things, like bottles, cans and paper, will be recycled. Some things will be burnt. But most of it will be dumped in places like this. This is the landfill site at Westbridge. It was first used 10 years ago, and it was expected to last for 30 or 40 years. But now it's... Um... That cut. It's OK. I think we'll be able to edit that out, and No. This is going to be done properly. We'll have to start again from the beginning. We haven't got any more cans. Well, then I'll just have to use one of these. Every day, millions of tonnes of rubbish are produced. We throw our rubbish into the dustbin. <laughs> Have I got an appointment with Frederick now? He's in Moscow. I can get him on his mobile if you want. No, it's all right. What on earth is the matter with Julia? I had to tell her something three times. Haven't you heard? She and Tim have split up. And Sean says that Tim's just the same. What do you mean? They had to film something ten times this morning because Tim couldn't remember his lines. That's not like Tim. I know. And Julia hasn't smiled for days. Oh. You can't work with people like that. I've seen it too many times and it always causes problems. We'll have to do something about it. I'm sorry about this morning, Sean. It's all right. It's Julia. I tried to explain, but she just won't listen. I'm sure you'll be able to sort things out. Maybe. She's going to have to make the first move. She broke it off. Look, she'll have to come past here when she leaves. Why don't you just say hello to her? That isn't too difficult, is it? Same again. Why should I make the first move? It was all his fault. You don't have to do anything, really. He's over there. Just say hello to him when you leave. Maybe. Anyway, I'm going now. 
Bye. Bye. You still okay for Romeo and Juliet tonight? What? Oh, um, I suppose so. Great. I'll pick you up about quarter to seven. Yes, okay, Gary. See you later then. Are you okay? You're miles away. I was just thinking about something, nothing important. Well, here we are. Home again. Thank you for this evening, Gary. I enjoyed the play. Aren't you going to ask me in for a cup of coffee? No, Gary. It's late and I won't be able to get up in the morning. Just a good night kiss then? No, Gary. Just good night. Oh, sweet Julia, just one kiss for your poor Romeo. Don't be silly. Oh, oh, oh my oh, uncle. Oh, 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 oh Gary. Oh. Oh. How's your ankle? I think it's all right. Will you be able to drive? Oh, yes, I'll be fine. Good night. Ten bars. What? Where are you? Frankfurt? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm working today. No, it's all right, I can change that. No, really. What time do you get to London? 10.45. Okay, I'll be there. See you later. <sighs> Hi, Pete. It's Tim. Sorry to bother you so early, but I've got a bit of a problem. Can you cover for me today? <sighs> Cheers. Tim. I thought he was going in late today, but he seemed to be in a hurry. I suppose something important has come up. How was your date with Gary? Oh, don't ask. It's 
Great to see you. Lovely to see you too, Tim. What are you doing here? I've got an interview next week for a new job. Why didn't you let me know before? I didn't know myself until yesterday, and all the flights were fully booked. I was lucky to get this one. Anyway, I wanted to give you a surprise. Well, you certainly did that. <laughs> now, what would you like to do today? Oh, I don't know, really. I'm a bit tired. Where is it? Oh, I put it here yesterday. I know I did. Julia, come on now. It's okay, I'll be all right. You'll have to sort things out with him, you know. You can't go on like this. Do you want me to talk to him? No. I'll go and see him when we get home, if he's there. Martha said he's taking a few days off. write a letter to the managing director, but he said, what's the matter? I've had a really nice day. Just a minute, Denise. I'll introduce you to my neighbours. Can I wait till tomorrow? I feel a bit tired now. Jet lag. OK. We can call in at the wine bar tomorrow evening. I'm sure they'll be there. Can I have a word, please? Of course, Julia. What's the problem? Can I move to another department? A transfer? But why? You're doing so well here. It's... it's personal. Tim, I suppose. Haven't you two made it up yet? You were made for each other. When you get to my age, you can see these things. Well, if you really want to transfer, I'll talk to Frederick when he gets back from Russia. But I'll be sorry to lose you. I'll just go to the loo. Hi. Where's your girlfriend? What? It didn't take you long to find one. It didn't take me long. What about you? Last night you were kissing and cuddling him in the street. I wasn't. You were. I went out to get a pizza and when I was coming back I saw you. I wasn't cuddling Gary. He had fallen over and twisted his ankle. I was helping him. Isn't that right, Gary? Oh. <laughs> well, I didn't know. The back. Are these your friends? Yes. Let me introduce everyone. This is um, Gary, Sean, Rebecca and Julia. This is Denise, my sister. Hello. Hi. Hi. Your sister? <laughs> your sister? Why didn't you say? You didn't give me a chance. There's a free table over there. 